Great. Thanks, everybody. Our next question. There is a growing wave of interest in developing new cooperatives in the U.S., especially with food co-ops. How can the existing cooperative community best support these efforts? There's many ways that we can use their support, and, and many of the food co-op community are doing a fantastic job already of supporting the startups. We Almost every store that's getting off the ground is turning to one of the existing stores, or in some cases several of the existing stores, for technical advice, for just plain uh, peer support, for mentoring. Some of the co-ops have been able to help with small loans or grants to help in development funding. And with almost as many new co-ops starting as there are existing, that's a challenge for that community to be able to support so many. But again, they've stepped up to the plate and done a great job. I think that by having a more consistent vision of how we will support co-ops in the future, we can do an even better job. And for the co-op, established co-op community to work, to have a, you know, a plan for how they will support co-op development and whether that includes funding, which we would hope that it would because it's always difficult to find capital in a, in a grassroots organizing effort, but uh, whether it includes the funding part, it, it will include ways of providing those support that they need so desperately. and. Uh, access to the talent and the ideas and the connections that the existing co-ops have. Uh, in some cases, co-ops have become very, more than mentors, they've become almost uh, almost partners in development with their, their local food co-op organizing teams, and, and that's been great. Well, the existing co-op community has already been very supportive in these efforts. Uh, we did a survey recently of people who are involved in startups and the number one place that they go for support and resources is to existing food co-ops. So first, keep doing what we're doing, sharing our stories and our resources, reaching out and helping when we can. Um, referring people to the food co-op initiative so that they know where to go to get the first uh, level of support and basic resources for starting a co-op is really helpful. I think another thing it's really important to remember is that starting a co-op in 2011 is not the same as it was starting a co-op in the 1970s or the 1980s. The competitive market is a lot different. The economic market is a lot different. People's expectations have changed. The demographics in terms of the amount of time people spend uh, working is quite different than it was in 1970s. So the ways that our existing food co-ops got started, many of them in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, some of those same things won't work for this current wave of co-ops. So while, while it's good to tell our stories, it's also important to recognize that things are different. And we also don't want the co-ops starting today to make the same mistakes that the co-ops that started in the last generation made. Um, probably more than half of those co-ops went out of business, and we hope that we would um, not repeat those failures by starting out with really good practices. I think there's three or four things that come to mind. One is is encouragement, simply um, uh, answering questions, engaging with folks in your community or when they make contact, but to be a, of encouragement uh, and a referral to help them get connected to the places uh, that can provide assistance so that they don't get continuously lost or, or stuck in a runaround, uh, that we actually get into the places that can help them advance their interests. I think the second thing is actual mentorship and engagement, uh, whether that's um, uh, helping with management of a startup or um, allowing staff members to interact and support uh, new, uh, new startups, uh, uh, but a whole variety of uh, ways of allowing new co-ops and, and boards and, and management to hang out and learn from the lessons that we've, uh, that we've um, already learned uh, among our established co-ops. I think a third one is actually um, investment in the, the support network that supports these young growing and, and, and uh, startup uh, co-ops. Things like food co-op initiative, um, uh, co-op development centers, engagement, financial support, um, resource and energy to support the centers because um, every any given startup the group that's doing that is only ever going to start one co-op in their life. We need to have a strong infrastructure of folks who, are, who will work with a number of startups, and we need that network to be strong. Supporting that financially and with other resources is, uh, 
is really important. And then I think the fourth way is that we actually engage in advocacy, that we tell our story about cooperatives to policymakers, uh, whether that's at state or local levels, um, uh, that we uh, certainly tell it at federal levels, that we say cooperatives have a place in this economy and we um, have a rightful place at that economic development table uh, and folks, you need to, uh, policymakers, um, uh, folks in government, you need to pay attention to this. And having that come from established business carries a different weight than coming from uh, folks who are not yet in business. And so active engagement there is really important. Well, one of the things that we're doing here at NCGA is really examining, examining the role that we can play in the development of these um, startups or, or interested groups in wanting food co-ops. And there are other ent entities in our sector between the Food Co-op Initiative and CDS Consulting Co-op and others not everyone can do every aspect of development in these in these projects and so we're really trying to focus and align uh, a model where we can all work together at different phases of development of these projects um, so that these projects have a best chance of success we all have places in the development curve that we are most suited to plug into and so that's one of the things that that NCGA and our subsidiary development cooperative are working on right now I guess if I were to offer something for an individual local co-op to do, it would be to mentor a neighboring group. I mean, if there's someone nearby, be a mentor. Be willing to have conversations. Be willing to talk about you know different strategies from your own local experience. And and many startup groups are craving that kind of connection to other cooperators. Well, if you take a look historically, whenever there's an economic downturn. Uh, people turn to their neighbors and say, you know, there has to be a different way uh, for us to organize uh, our business affairs. And uh, so we saw that and, you know, following the Great uh, Depression, we, every t and we've seen that since every time there's been ups and downs on the marketplace. So the reaction that we're, we're seeing where people are saying, gee, uh, let's take a look at how we could to organize ourselves for our mutual benefit, the cooperative model certainly fits that, is something that from a historical perspective we know actually works. So I think one thing that we can do, the existing cooperative community can help uh, people who are organizing new cooperatives with the lessons learned over the many, many decades of what works and what doesn't work when you're developing a cooperative. So that's, that's let's let make the same mistakes that perhaps we've made in the past. And so that's that's uh, uh, one area where that the existing co-op community can be uh, helpful. The other, I think another area is um, working across different types of cooperative sectors so that other types of cooperatives could be supporting the interest in food co-op development, whether it's in best practices around governance uh, or uh, capital creation, uh, things like that. Uh, that's an area where NCBA has created a, is working on creating a cooperative investment fund uh, that would allow individuals and organizations to invest in the fund that would be a new source of capital uh, for cooperatives that want to expand and new cooperatives that gets that want to get started. So uh, this is another area where the existing co-op community could provide opportunities and, and for capital creation to help new startups. One of the seven principles and values of the International Cooperative Alliance is cooperatives help other cooperatives. And these are seven principles that go back to the days of the Rochdale pioneers in the 1840s. And these are principles and values that cooperatives in, in 90 plus countries around the world have adopted and, and agree are what define a cooperative. That intercooperation is essential. And we're at a time where we're seeing more of that. We're seeing the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, now South Africa, the cooperatives in those countries are beginning to meet now as a group and looking at how they can engage in transactions with one another so that they can help support their economies, not only locally, but also by helping the cooperatives in those other countries support theirs. Uh, ICA hosts an expo, a trade fair, every two years. And the next one will be coming up at the end of the international year, at the end of 2012 in Manchester, UK, in, uh, in November. 
And this is an opportunity for cooperatives to bring their products and to bring their services together to a trade fair and to meet other cooperatives and to, and to build the relationships for ongoing transactions that really help in this, in this kind of development. At the same time, we're seeing newer cooperatives in new space, in new, in new areas, uh, want to begin to network with one another to learn from one another. So we have long had sectoral organizations. We have, a, we have a sector for banking cooperatives and credit unions. We have one for insurance. We have one for agriculture, for fisheries, for health care, for housing, for consumer cooperatives. And the cooperatives who work in energy are beginning to talk now and say, we need to understand better what's happening in other countries. There is this whole interest in, in new technology and how cooperatives can be part of that. We have worker cooperatives now. We have a sector for them. But to really uh, focus on some of these new areas is something else that we believe will help cooperatives grow in areas where we have some incredible opportunities.